Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dean Zenick. I'm the president of the Palm Beach County Bar Association. I'm here with Kelsey Burke, uh, president of the Palm Beach County Hispanic Bar Association. And we're here today uh, representing the Florida Jurist recognizing legal, recognizing Hispanic excellence uh, put on by the Florida Bar and several other voluntary bar associations uh, throughout Florida. And today, our spotlight is on, is on Judge Lou Delgado in Palm Beach County, 15th Judicial Circuit. Uh, Judge Delgado, thank you for coming today. No, thank you for having me. So just a quick bio of uh, Judge Delgado. Uh, Judge Louis Lou Delgado uh, immigrated to the Please United call States. me Lou. <laughs> I have to read it the way it is, Judge, but yes, we'll call you from Lou from now on. Uh, immigrated to the United States at the age of six with his parents and brother from Peru. Uh, through lots of hard work and dedication, he attended the University of Florida for both uh, undergrad and law school. Uh, he then uh, was called into active service and deployed to Iraq um, through the Navy. Then when returning, uh, <laughs> then returning um, back to Palm Beach County, he's held several leadership positions in the local bar associations. Um, too many to name here. We're actually going to give a, a longer bio uh, at the live event, but we wanted to recognize lots of service, lots of committees, lots of presidencies. Um, prior to taking the bench. He's currently um, a Palm Beach County uh, 15th Judicial Circuit uh, with, the, with uh, juvenile delinquency, juvenile dependency, and the Unified Family Court Matters in Delray Beach. Um, with that, let's go ahead and get started with the questions since I apparently can't read very well today. So Judge, uh, <laughs> good having you today. Uh, let's start with the first topic, which is uh, background information. Um, what is your family's national cultural background and what was your upbringing like? I know I, I briefly touched on it, but let's get in a little more detail. What was it like um, growing up where you grew up? So we immigrated to this country when I was about six, maybe five and a half, six, uh, and lived in South Florida. So I was born in Peru. I've got one brother that was born in Peru, one brother that was born here in, in Palm Beach County. Um, and so Spanish was the first language I spoke. Uh, I, I can tell you that um, while, you know, being Hispanic is an important part of who I am, uh, I think everybody comes to this country in search of something better. There's hope, dreams that they're looking to pursue, and my family was no different. And so uh, I think they came here looking for uh, that American dream, and little by little, started to achieve it. And growing up in that, in that way and coming to this country, what kind of challenges did you face growing up? Well, I mean, so we never really had a whole lot of money. I, my mom and my pop were, I think, some of the best people I've ever met. And no matter how difficult things got, I remember they would always say that we always have our dignity and our respect. And what they would really instill in us was focus on school, uh, focus on having a good reputation so that we could succeed. Uh, I, th I think the hardest parts were, were probably just uh, financial growing up. Uh, I mean, there are some ugly stuff that you encounter, but uh, you really can't let any of that affect you. Um, because if you do, it stops, it slows you down. And when I say some, I'm, I'm talking very little bit. By and large, I think the people of Palm Beach County were very good to me from very early on. And those perspectives and challenges that we just talked about, how do you think that's helped you on the bench? Well, it makes you tough, makes you strong. And at the same time, you understand that, you know, if you're going to achieve anything, you've got to participate. And when things don't go your way, you've got to keep going. Perseverance is probably the single most important thing I learned. And I learned that from my parents because they worked really tough jobs. They worked long hours and they just never stopped. Uh, and so you see that and you think, wow, you know, um, they're working so hard. There's no reason I shouldn't. That's understood. Understood. So you've, you've used a lot of adjectives before about, you know, your upbringing and the challenges. What would you say the one, one adjective you just said has helped you most in your legal career? Perseverance. 
uh, because you're not always going to have the best set of facts. You're not always going to have uh, best law on your side, and you've got to go in there and, and litigate. And uh, if you're afraid to veer, it's going to be difficult. I mean, you've always got to be ethical, but uh, you, you can't let obstacles stop you from trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve. All right, that was topic one. I'll now switch over to Kelsey. Or I'm actually I'm going to stay on for topic two, aren't I, Kelsey? We went back and forth on this. Apparently, I forgot. All right, so topic two. <laughs> uh, do you believe it is important to have cultural diversity on the bench? I think all kinds of diversity are very important. Uh, cultural, ideological, uh, upbringing. Um, I think the most important thing for a jurist really should be impartiality because when you talk about uh, the people who benefit from diversity, like a Hispanic population, you also need to have uh, impartial jury uh, and impartial judges because if you have that impartiality, it doesn't matter where you're from, you can succeed in this nation of laws. Um, so I, I do think it's important but I, I believe that impartiality from your judges and from the people in your community are the most important thing. In Palm Beach County, um, would you say that we've gotten better at having diversity on the bench uh, that is pro proportionate to the minority groups in our county? Absolutely. Uh, you know, when I think about myself and a friend of mine, Bradley Harper, uh, but we got elected in 2016. And before that, I, I can think of uh, a handful of judges that were Hispanic, and all of them had been appointed by governors. But then in 2016, I got elected. And so I, I think I was the first person to become a judge in Palm Beach County who was initially elected. And so you see that, and then my friend Bradley Harper did that, and he's African American, uh, and he was the first African American who was elected instead of being appointed. And so you start to see these changes in our communities and our societies. And so you, you have to answer that. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you're starting to see more and more of it. And I think it's a very, very good thing. And on that topic, would you say there's any special challenges uh, or considerations that culturally diverse candidates may face when seeking appointment or election to the bench? I think the biggest obstacle is probably in the mirror. A lot of people have doubts or they question themselves. Uh, I, when I have this conversation with uh, young attorneys, I, I tell them that you have to participate and you have to include yourself and you have to take your, your opportunities. Uh, the worst thing that you can do is exclude yourself because then you don't even get started. I think the biggest obstacle is really in the mirror. I think if you really want to do something in not just law, but in, in general, and you have to, you have to try. What other people do, what other people say about you, um, that's what they're saying and that's what they're doing. But that's not really an obstacle to you because people are gonna say things no matter what. Biggest obstacles in the mirror and getting started. All right, thank you, Judge. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Kelsey for the next topic. Well, thank you so much. Um, obviously, I've known you for such a long time. Uh, before I became an attorney, before you became a judge, um, in 2016, you became a judge. And I still remember the day you said, I'm running for judge. And so it was all very exciting. Um, and um, I definitely, you, um, you put up a good fight and you made it up there uh, on the bench. And so we're very, very proud of you as past president of the Palm Beach County Hispanic Bar Association as well as past president of the Young Lawyers um, section of the Palm Beach County Bar since when, I think you were the president when I first became an attorney um, uh, there as well. And um, I still remember your investiture. It was one of the, you know, my favorite investiture. And so tell us a little bit about what motivated you to run for a judge or become a judge um, and what continues to motivate you as a judge. So I started out as a prosecutor and I was assigned to a division. I was in front of this judge who I thought was the smartest, most patient, most intelligent person uh, I'd ever met. Uh, and I remember one day I looked up and I thought, I want to be like him. And so from that day, uh, and that was in 2009, uh, 
almost everything I did was to get me closer and closer to becoming a judge. Uh, I think that that person's been an incredible motivation and inspiration uh, in how I try to conduct myself. Uh, as a matter of fact, over, over my shoulder over here, you can see there's a, a picture of Dr. King that was a present from that judge when he retired to me. And it's something I cherish very, very much. And when I come in my office and I see that, I remember thinking why I wanted to become a judge, uh, my inspiration for trying to become a judge, and how if I could be, I think, half the judge that that person was, I would be successful. And so I, I, I try to approach every case with patience. I try to approach every case with uh, an open ear. Uh, again, trying to be a, uh, the best judge I can possibly be by being knowledgeable in the law and being impartial and hearing everybody. But I think another jurist was probably the single most uh, inspiring thing for me to try to become a judge. And about that, I remember that day that we were all sitting down and I told my friends, my very close friends at the Hispanic Bar Association that I want to be a judge. I did that on purpose because going to file the paperwork to run for a countywide office in a big county can be, it can be scary. Uh, it can be intimidating. And I know that in the hours after I filed that paperwork, I wanted to be around people who were going to be supportive. And so we had a meeting at 530 and at three o'clock, I wanted to go file the paperwork so that I could have it in my hands by 430 and race over and tell everybody that was at that table what I had just done. And everybody at that table was so kind and warm. Uh, it was a really wonderful day for me. Well, we're, we're very, very proud of you. Uh, and so um, you took the bench um, almost four years ago. Um, and um, at that time, there were more Hispanic judges on the Palm Beach County bench in comparison to now, as some of them have either retired or um, like uh, Judge Artel is now in the fourth um, DCA. Um, what was it like being a judge, a uh, Hispanic judge, when you first started in 2016? as in comparison to now, has anything changed? Well, so in 2016, when I first started, I, I kind of come in and I, I had never been a judge. And so now it's been about four years and I can tell you that what's changed is, is maybe a little bit of my perspective, my, the way that I, that I approach the job. As far as, uh, you know, the makeup of the bench since then to now, Judge Artau is no longer with us. He's actually on the District Court of Appeals. And, uh, you know, I, I guess what I would say is maybe a word of encouragement, maybe, you know, tug on someone's ears. But if, if there's less Hispanic judges in Palm Beach County now than there was four years ago, then I think it's maybe we need to find or people need to look in the mirror and say that they want to be a judge and actually do it and run for it because they're very welcoming here in Palm Beach County. I've been accepted with open arms. Uh, I can remember my first day as a judge, uh, people sat me down and they told me they wanted me to be the best judge I could possibly be because if I was a good judge, then the people of Palm Beach County would have a good judge and that we all are reflective on each other. So when people see a judge do wonderful things on, on the news, they think that judges do wonderful things. And when they see that judges are doing things that maybe they shouldn't be doing, they don't identify just the one judge, they see all judges. Uh, and if we had uh, more Hispanic candidates uh, put in for office or get appointed for office, I know that that would happen. Uh, and so I would, encourage, I would encourage more people to seek the office because it's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Um, you touched a little bit on being a judge who um, is impartial, but aside from having a good education, a strong work ethic, what other um, essential qualities do you believe it's important for a judge to have? Well, the impartiality is absolutely the most important thing. And, and I know we covered it, but I, so I, I come from South America. And one of the things I used to say to a lot of people was that some of these justice systems are not the best and sometimes justice goes to people who are the most influential or have the, uh, the deepest pockets and so seeing that reading these newspapers in south america uh, what i've taken away is that it doesn't matter who you are if you're treated 
like everybody else. That's what gets a good justice system. Impartiality is easily the most important uh, trait of a judge. But I think to get here, you're right, the hard work, the studying, the perseverance, because you have to learn a lot. Uh, it's, it's different than advocacy, because when you're advocating, you have one set of facts, you've got your arguments, and you are anticipating what the other side is going to say or do. But then you're presenting the case, and the judge has got to make rulings on evidence, the procedures. It, it was a big learning curve. Um, and so you, you've got to work hard, you've got to be dedicated, and you can't, no one's perfect. You've got to persevere and continue to work hard because everybody's relying on you to be the best possible judge that you can possibly be so that they can have their cases heard in the best and most impartial way possible. You have a long history of community involvement on uh, your legal career, um, as well as before you became an attorney by serving in the military. Um, I remember um, you've, uh, while you were president of the YLS here in Palm Beach County, um, you've always went above and beyond mentoring young lawyers. Um, why do you believe that's important? I'm thinking about the future. Uh, I, I, I think about my past. And I had some very important people that were influential to me, uh, teach me, guide me, and their help was invaluable. So now that I'm a judge, whenever I can, wherever it's permissible, uh, I, I see it as just a personal obligation, not imposed by anybody, but to try to help someone achieve or to become better. Uh, I mean, it, it makes me feel like I'm paying forward the efforts of the people from my past. Those are all the questions I have. I'm obviously so very, very proud of you and everything that you have accomplished, you continue to accomplish. And, uh, you know, we all, um, Palm Beach County and the Palm Beach County Hispanic Bar Association, um, really admire your work ethic, um, your integrity and perseverance. So thank you. Thank you for everything you do. And we, um, you know, continue to be here to support you and watch you grow as a judge and um, keep making us proud. And I'll, I'll conclude by this because perseverance keeps being the word and, and Kelsey was talking about when she first found out you were going to be a judge. I, I do too. Uh, we were at the Palm Beach County Bar uh, Board of Directors Retreat 2015 and we were standing at, a, at uh, the hotel and you said, I'm running, I'm gonna run for judge one day. And I said, oh really, that's great. And the next year you were a judge. So talk about perseverance. And you know, I, I maybe didn't know if you were serious or not at the time. I'm like, well, yeah, maybe in a few years he'll be a judge or in 10 years and next thing I know you're the judge. So um, you definitely achieve your goals and, and you're an inspiration. So uh, we appreciate that. And it's great to have you on the uh, bench in the 15th Judicial Circuit. No, thank you. It, this is a wonderful country. You know, uh, like I said, you come here with hopes and aspirations and you're looking to chase a dream. And this was one of mine. Uh, and until I got here, I didn't want to stop. And I still haven't stopped because I want to be the best judge I could possibly be for the people in the community because they deserve that. So, you know, there's always another goal and I'm working on mine right now. Great, Judge. Thank you very much. 